was amazing. This was the best night so far. I just had an encounter with a whole badger family. Four cops and two adults. And they were all playing together and having a, a jolly good time. So this was fantastic. So how did I get here? How did I manage to film an entire badger family from only 15 yards away? Well, to answer that question, we have to go back a few months. So it's now late December and the forest is almost completely bare. And now that there's minimum vegetation, it's a great moment to look for badger sets, for badger dens. And that's what I'm going to do for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to systematically search this forest for sites of elevation where badgers can burrow. Very near the edge of the forest, close to farmland, where badgers can find a lot of food. And there should be water as well. So at this intersection between water, farmland and sites of elevation, you have the potential to find badgers. And I know that we have several badger sets in this area. I just don't know where they are. But I'm hoping to find out so that I can return with a telephoto lens in my photo blind and film these animals from a distance. So this is such a place where you could find badger sets, potentially, near the edge of the forest, very close to farmland, where badgers can find a lot of food. They can find crops, they can find earthworms, and they're also near water. The only thing you need to add to these ingredients, namely forest, water, and farmland, is elevation. Places where water bodies have been dug out, excavated, and where the soil has been dumped uh, nearby. And this creates artificial elevation, and badgers love it, because it allows them to bury up to 4 meters, or about 14 feet, in depth, while staying above the groundwater level. This way they can stay dry, but they can still burrow very deep into the earth. This is also what our forestry department does. To ensure that animals such as badgers can cross from one area to the other, they've made these gaps in the fence, these little openings where badgers can easily cross. Well, it's another misty late December day. Another day for badger hunting. And let's see what we can find in this area. I'm not allowed to go into the woods, so I have to stay on the trail, so I do not disturb the animals. But from the trail you can still peer quite deep into the forest. So maybe that's good enough to spot a badger set. So this is a typical animal trail, mostly created by deer, but possibly also badgers. So here you can see the trail going into the forest. So there's always an interesting area to look. I feel that we're getting closer. This is a clear pipe that's been dug by a fox or a badger and this could be the remain of an old set or just a subsidiary set or a temporal hideout uh, made by a badger. So this is a clear crossing site where deer cross this little stream. You can see this clearly over here. You can see the tracks made by a fellow deer. But badgers could also use this, this path. That was a nice deer, Capriolus Capriolus, also known as a roe deer, standing there in the rain. And that's another deer. So our forestry department ensures that these places remain open 
so that the deer graze over here in the morning, in the evening. And then of course the hunters can hunt them from their high hides, their posts over here. So far I have not been able to find any latrines where the badgers deposit their feces. So maybe I'll find one of those in this area. And this looks awfully familiar to a badger track. But this could be wishful thinking on my part. But the tracks lead that way to the edge of that forest. So I'll have a peek. Well, this could be a badger set or a fox's. And whether it's active or not, I'm not sure. Could be active, so maybe I'll return sometime later and uh, observe this spot from a distance in a photo blind with a telephoto lens. Who knows if badgers or foxes are active here. So now I'm going to look for tracks and then I'm going to leave this site because if there are badgers here, I do not want to disturb them for too long. Here you can see a second entrance, possibly an entrance to this set, or what seems to be a badger set. There is the main entrance. And this badger set is located in the center of a, of a hazel forest, a forest with hazel trees. And hazelnuts, of course, provide a fantastic food source for badgers during fall. And just nearby, I found a second one. Um, these could be all connected, so this is the second one. And right there in the back, behind the trees, is the other, the other entrance. So this one, and that one could potentially be connected and could form a giant uh, den or set. This is some pretty rough terrain. This is the area, this is an area of the forest where a lot of trees were blown down. But if I go through this rough patch, I get to a very hilly area, which is perfect for badgers. There's grassland, there's water, and there's lots of elevation. It's badger heaven, so let's, let's check it out. There's a sinkhole underneath me as well. Make matters worse. Oh. This is hiking next level. Oh. Oh. All the wood is wet and slippery and mossy. There's this used to be ocean floor so this is all sea clay that's wet and soggy and there are sinkholes and trees everywhere this is breakneck alley what we seem to have cleared we seem to have cleared the rough patch so Look at these beautiful hills. Some of these hills are about three meters or ten feet high. It's very close to open grassland where, where the badgers can forage on earthworms. There's lots of elevation to dig. So this seems to be badger heaven. But there's one caveat however. You can find quite a lot of horses and cattle in this area. So the cattle and horses will trot on the badger sets and they may cause different parts of the set to cave in which is not great for, for badgers of course and that may be a reason why I won't find any sets in this area. Well, there's plenty of food to go around in this area for badgers. Earthworms, their staple diet. Well, it is as I feared. There's nothing here. Only tracks made by cattle and deer. No badgers. 
so that marks next month marks a year of searching it's been literally a year of searching for badgers but two badgers were killed uh, on the road nearby during their nightly crossing so I know that badgers do exist in this area and I will find them but this is always the case with wildlife photography and cinematography you have to persist you have to keep up and sooner or later your investment your time will be rewarded yeah that's where the car is bearing north sometimes these little watches help you navigate through the forest Well, we survived another day in paradise. See you tomorrow. Winter in the Netherlands. Wouldn't want to miss this. Let's clean the lens a little bit. So if you're wondering why I'm so crazy to go out in this, in this terrible weather, well, this time of year is fantastic. This is when you can look for badgers. That, this is when the forest is very open. There's not a lot of vegetation. Of course, in the winter, the weather in the Netherlands is terrible. We used to have snow. Due to climate change, we have mostly rain and wind. But it's not cold, it's just very wet. And I have a few more months before I have to stop searching. Okay, January, February, March, uh, so many months of searching to do, uh, there should be enough time to find uh, one or two sets. Even though I seem to be in high spirits here, I do have to admit that all this searching was wearing me down. I really wanted to find a badger set. It looks promising, but the entrance is, is too narrow for badger, so either it's a fox or it's just an old badger set again. So let's have a closer look. So even though this does not seem to be a badger set, because the, the pipe, the hole is too narrow, it could be, could be an old badger set. And maybe they use this subsidiary set uh, to forage on this farmland, this grassland during certain periods of the year. And I do see tracks running from that potential subsidiary set uh, deeper into the forest, uh, which is that way. So I'm going to explore a little further. And often main badger sets are located 50 to 100 yards from subsidiary sets. So I think it's uh, worthwhile to check out this trail. And maybe we can find some more badger activity here. This is also a nice one. This is a bit broader. So that's better. Perhaps now we're getting somewhere. And there does seem to be a subtle track running from this pipe. You can see it here. So this could be used by badgers. Uh, a very small thin track. So maybe I can find some prints or some hairs here. Unfortunately this badger set also seemed to be empty. So I continued my search on another drizzly day. And again, we see a beautiful track running here. I just saw some fallow deer, so maybe this is made by them or by badgers. So let's check it out. That's where the edge of the forest is. There's a lot of farmland over here, so a perfect place for a badger set. Let's check it out. Look what we have here. Look at this. Look at these pipes. Amazing. I think this is it. So I can find at least seven large pipes. And they're very broad, which is typical for a badger. Because a badger has a very broad body. 
So the entrance of a fox usually is taller than it is wide. But for the badger it is the opposite. It is always wider than it is tall. It's like a letter D on its side, a capital letter D. And this is exactly what you can see uh, with all these pipes over here. These are typical badger pipes. Well, this is a badger set. You can see where the badgers walk. You can see all these trails from pipe to pipe. And you can see the trail leads into the forest over there. And we can simply follow the badger's trail. And there we find yet another pipe. Beautiful. And that's a pipe. And if you follow that track, what do you find? Yet yeah, another pipe, maybe the tenth pipe already. So this is a pretty big badger badger set. This is about, well, I don't know, maybe 10 by 15 meters, 150 square meters. So it's a lot of earth these badgers dug out. And if you look closely, you can see this bare patch around this hazel tree. And this is probably one of the so-called playing trees where the young badger cubs run around and play. And this patch will be much more pronounced during summer when the young cubs play around this tree and remove all the vegetation and all the leaves. So this is a, a, a typical sign of, a, of an active badger family with young cubs playing around a tree. Running from the set, you can see this perfect trail, a very clear trail going into the forest and on this track what do we find? a clear badger print in the frozen clay we can see the footpath and the toes and even the nails and this is I think another track that overlaps with this one but you can clearly see the the pad of the foot of the paw and the toes and the nails. Beautiful. This is a badger for sure. And over here we can find another key characteristic of badgers. And this is most likely an old latrine. And so this latrine has two roles. First it allows the badgers to, to keep their set clean as they defecate outside of their set. And these latrines also serve as territorial markings. Badgers leave a scent uh, using their anal glands and this scent is also left behind with the droppings in these latrines and, and this allows other badgers from other clans uh, to know that this is a um, that this is another territory which they should not cross so this is a clear latrine it's clear territorial marking with droppings uh, made by the badger and you can see another badger track uh, very near this uh, latrine beautiful and it's now January, so the sows will be pregnant. And you can see that there's a lot of grass uh, lying in front of the entrance. And this is old nesting material that has been exchanged for new, uh, new grass. So that the, uh, the badgers are ready for the new cubs that will arrive soon. And here you can find some more nesting material. So these badgers are very active. So I'm really excited to finally visit my first badger set. As you can see there's a lot of activity here, a lot of pipes, a lot of trails indicating that these badgers use these trails on a regular basis. So I hope to return very soon uh, during spring. And now I will leave these animals in peace uh, because the sow is likely pregnant. It will have a few young uh, in her belly. Um, so she needs her rest so I'm going to leave now. And maybe in May I can observe these badgers and their offspring from a distance. So it's now almost March and I've installed a camera trap near the entrance of this badger set. So I've got this old Bushnell HD camera trap that I borrowed from a friend of mine, Rick. Thanks Rick. I see that this camera trap has recorded 24 different clips and a few of them will be of me installing the trap. But hopefully it'll have captured a few badgers. Now the badgers are now taking care of their young so I have to leave very quickly. 
but hopefully um, at least a boar, the male, will have come out last night to forage. So hopefully I'll have captured at least one badger. And near the entrance of this set is this log. And if you look closely you can see that this log has been scratched a lot. And this is a log where the badgers um, scratch their nails to keep their nails short. So you can see these typical scratching marks. And often badgers use live trees and this is just a log that is also perfect for um, taking care of the badger's nails. And it's so fascinating to see all this behavior that is so specific to badgers around the set. So this is another active badger track. And it rained last night so everything's very muddy. Which is the perfect moment to look for badger prints. Have a look. This is again a beautiful badger print. You can see the toes and the foot pad. What a nice print. So badgers definitely are active here and I hope that my camera trap will um, further substantiate this, this, uh, this theory. Unfortunately, for some reason, the camera trap only recorded stills and not video. However, what you see on this picture is unmistakably a badger. You can see the gray fur and the top of the hat with its typical black and white stripe pattern. Yes, this is indeed a badger. A couple of days later, I decided to mount my camera trap near another set. I decided to suspend the camera trap directly above a badger trail. And this trail was clearly worn and used a lot. And I got lucky that first night. An adult badger slowly approached the camera trap. But then the camera trap clicked when it started to record a video. And this spooked the badger, so it ran away. And you can see the badger looking around, trying to find out what was going on. And then suddenly, the adult badger returned to the set, where it was fighting with a juvenile, which was also keen to explore its environment and to find out what was going on. After a short skirmish, the juvenile held back and the badger returned to the camera trap. And after a while it decided that things were safe and it trotted off into the forest. And you can see that the juvenile stayed back for a while, after which it also trotted off into the forest. So even though these camera traps do not yield fantastic image quality, it is amazing to see this social behavior of badgers up close and personal. And this is great news because this means that this set is occupied. And this spring I will return with my photo blind and my telephoto lens. And hopefully I can make some beautiful stills and video of these animals. So it's now early March and I'm now very close to one of the sets and look at this trail. These are all badger prints. So we have massive badger activity in early spring. This is really great news. This means that this area is and remains very active. In this forest up to three badger clans or families may be active. And for one of these clans, I have a good overview of how they move about at night. Following their trails, I was able to connect two main sets and three different subsidiary sets. And these main and subsidiary sets are interconnected through trails. And along these trails, you can find latrines and lots of prints. And also some escape holes. And this means that I have a very good idea of how these badgers in this area move around. And this will be very helpful in selecting the appropriate sites for some decent badger photography and filming. So in April and May I will choose my spots according to their migration routes and according to the wind so the animals do not smell me.
Well, it's now mid-March and I was riding my mountain bike today and I came across an area which is known to harbor badgers. And this is the first site in this province where badgers were once found many years ago. So I decided to have a look. So I jumped off my mountain bike and I looked for about 20-30 minutes and look what I found. Maybe it's not very clear on the video, but this is another badger set occupied by another clan, another distinct badger family. So I found many holes over here. So I'm going to investigate further and see how many holes or pipes I can find. But this is the um, the third location where badgers are active in this area. So this is fantastic. And this is an area that is very well hidden from sight. This is an area which is very uh, rich in, uh, in old trees, in old willow trees and poplars. And by April, May, it will be infested with uh, stinging nettles, prickle bushes. Um, I think in English they call them stinging nettles. And these stinging nettles grow very fast and in May they may be as tall as a, as a man, as me. So the badgers are very well hidden uh, from spring to fall. And this is where they can forage. And there's a lot of farmland uh, that way. So this is the perfect area for badgers to hide and to, um, to go out into the fields to feed on earthworms at night. This is how I first saw the set this morning. This is the uh, the back side of the set and here you can see the uh, the tree that went down and then I noticed this little this old hole and then on the other side that's where you can find all the pipes all the holes nicely sheltered from the elements it hasn't rained a lot these last couple of days so I cannot find very clear prints but I'm quite confident that based on the quantity and shape of the the entrance holes that this is an actively occupied by your set and this is what I'm looking for loose moss and reed grass that has been dragged into the entrance hole so this is nesting material and this is very likely a an active badger so I think this is the best angle to show you this badger set as I told you before this is a very dense forest even in March but here you can see all the pipes all the activity all the loose sand and yes, I also found some prints. Prints are very faint in this loose sand because it has not been raining much. But these are clearly badger prints. Look at this one. These are two overlapping prints with two rows of toes and a footpad. So this is very clearly an active badger set where nesting material is being dragged in and out of the, the entrance hole. So this is another badger clan. So I think we have at least three badger clans in this area. Fantastic. Truly amazing to, to find these little creatures. And if you follow these prints, this trail, you can see the entrance hole again where I found the nesting material over there. And nearby, about a hundred yards away, I found this small subsidiary set. This entrance hole is massive and it runs very deep. And you can see very deep into it. Maybe it's not clear on a video, but this is quite impressive. You can also find a lot of deer prints in front of this set. And of course it takes a lot of effort to make your way into the deeper parts of the forest. You get hurt, you fall down, you, uh, you injure your back or your knees or whatever, but uh, on these days it's really worth the effort to go deep into the forest and to find uh, this hidden badger set, which only a handful of people most likely will have witnessed personally. This is possibly one of the trails that the badgers use to go out of this forest. And that way you can find a lot of farmland. Sneaky badgers. And of course, next to this trail we find a latrine, an old one. You can see here how thick this forest is, even at the end of, the end of winter. You can imagine how lush and dense this will be in May. I don't think I can go here in May. I think I will stick to the other sets because this will be very difficult to reach with some photography equipment once the, uh, the prickle bushes, the stinging nettles and all the trees are in full growth. But still, it's, it's nice to, to have been here. The next day, I decided to visit a nearby forest based on a trail cam photograph of a badger that I saw on observation.org. And indeed, just after I exited the car, 
I found my first badger print, complete with a badger trail, some nesting material, and some latrines. So I followed this trail, and I found another small badger set. And this entrance hole also had some nesting material in front of it. And this suggests that we have at least four active badger clans in this area. And at this point, I'm starting to think that we have many more badger clans in this area. Who knows how many more I can find. Okay, it's now less than one week after I found two different badger sets in one weekend. And then, when I was riding my bike again, I found another trail in yet another forest nearby. And then I found this, this heap of earth. So I decided to check it out because I found some latrines. And lo and behold, here is yet another badger set. Amazing. Suddenly I can find them everywhere. Oh, this is so awesome. Look at this. This is huge. I could almost fit in there. You can't see it on the, on the video because it's widescreen. Well, let me switch to uh, a less wider lens. I mean, look at this. Now let's check for prints and confirm that badgers are indeed active here as well. Man, look at this. And there are more over there. Remember what I told you earlier in the video, the letter D? Well, that's your capital letter D right there. Beautiful. This is a badger set, definitely. And this badger set is located in a pine forest. And you can see that there is some nesting material in here together with a lot of pine needles. I wonder if they also use the needles as bedding. I'm not sure. I have to look that up. And this one is a bit taller than it is wide. So this could be a fox sharing this set with the badgers. And this is the other side of the set. And you can, you can clearly see that there are more pipes on this end. And you can see all these little trails that connect the pipes. Here, look at this one. Beautiful. And this set is located near a water source. So that's where you can find a trail. And this is a nice source of water for especially young badgers in summer. A beautiful location. So this is what happens when you persist. I decided to go home, but I saw this little trail, so I decided to turn back. And this is what happens. You get rewarded. So always go out there and explore. Every little trail, little detail, everything can lead you to something nice, something interesting. And look, this is another badger set, the fifth. So this was worth my trouble. This was worth another 30 minutes of searching in the rain. So I'm now back at the set. Fortunately the rains have ended, the sun is shining, and I've decided to return to this last set that I discovered to mount some new trail cams. And I bought this new trail cam yesterday. It's a very basic full HD trail cam, it was not too expensive. And this gives me an extra set of eyes on this set, because the last two weeks I've not been able to capture a lot of footage from the other sets. And sometimes badgers use a back door, so to speak, so they will exit from one area of the set and when your trail cam is on the other end you will not see any activity so this time I'm going to mount two trail cams on opposite sides of this set and hopefully by having an extra set of eyes on this set I can confirm that badgers are actively using it and this is a good tree to mount the first trail cam because when I mount this trail cam here it will face the front side of the set so it will look directly at the entrance holes at the front of the set. And I'll mount the other camera facing the back of the set. So let's mount it. As you can notice, I'm mounting the trail cam pretty low, very close to the ground. And this is because I'm not interested in deer pictures today. 
I'm interested in capturing badgers. And badgers, of course, are short animals and they live close to the ground. And that's why I also mount these trail cams accordingly. I also put some moss on top of the trail cam. It never hurts to camouflage your camera trap a little bit. Although in this case, it will still be quite visible to people who come near the set. And that's what I'm hoping for, that nobody has discovered this set. And that this camera will safely hang here for the next couple of nights. We'll see. So directly behind me is the back side of the set. And this is where three to four entrance holes can also be found. Well, both cameras are now suspended. There's one little thing. Never forget to turn on your trail cams. And this is a very easy beginner mistake. And you don't want to forget turning them on because the next day can be very disappointing. not much but it's something to obscure this trail cam from that side when should people pass by the back side of this this trail cam mostly the strap will hopefully be less noticeable and this will look like a more natural scene well that's that both trail cams are up and running and well, I'll just return in a couple of days and hopefully we'll have captured some nice badger activity. I was off to a good start with this fox, which was briefly captured by the trail cam. That night, a mouse scurried along several times. Since two entrance holes showed lots of burrowing activity, I was puzzled to only have captured the mouse, but badgers sometimes don't leave their set, so I left the cameras on for another night. Again, the mouse made an appearance, but then this lovely fox showed up again and posed in front of the camera. I did not capture anything else here that week, so I decided to return to the first set I showed you in this video, where I also captured my first badger. It was encouraging to see so many badger prints in the surrounding area. I mounted two trail cams and left the scene. That same afternoon, a deer walked behind the camera and seemed to nibble on the tree this camera was mounted to. Again, the first night, I only captured a mouse, which clearly inhabits this badger set. Then, finally, an adult badger emerged from one of the many holes of this set and started exploring. I find it amazing to see an animal this large emerge from a relatively small opening. About five hours later, the badger returned, only to walk off again in the direction where I found many prints. So, to conclude, this set, the first one I ever visited, is clearly the winner here. This is the set where I captured all my badger footage thus far. So, this is really the site to revisit in May, when the badgers hopefully will emerge before sunset, so I can capture them live. It's now mid-April, the sun is setting, and this is my first time visiting a badger set with my uh, photo blind and my camera. So the badger set is over there. The wind is coming uh, from that way. So there's a sheer wind. So the wind does not blow from me towards the set. And of course the photo blind will mask some of my smell. So I'm going to sit here for the next two to three hours. And hopefully the badgers will emerge. Of course it's still April, so there's only a slight chance. There's only a slight chance they will emerge. Um, but let's hope for my sake that they do because I've been waiting for this moment for 
a year and a half. It's been a year and a half of planning, reading, scouting, talking to the forestry department. I've never done so much homework to record an animal, but I'm sure it will be worth it once the first snout, the first badger, uh, emerges from the set. So let's see what happens. Let's set up the photo blind. I know how I look, it looks ridiculous, but your skin can be quite visible even uh, during a dark night. So your hands and your face should be covered as much as possible. So I'm keeping my hands low below the opening of my tent and I'm going to cover my face as much as possible so that the badgers hopefully do not see me. It's now more than half an hour after sunset. Well, it's now 9.15 p.m. It's almost pitch black. I can hear the last songbirds whistling out there in the forest. I can also smell the lovely fragrance of blackthorn flowers. And this was the first evening I spent some time in the forest this year. And I spent it near a badger set. And even though I didn't see any badgers this first night, it was fantastic to be out here in the forest again. So after next week, it will be very close to, to May, the end of April. Uh, and then I'll try again near this badger set. And even if you don't see any animals, uh, it's just amazing to be out here in the forest. Even though these two evenings were somewhat disappointing, they did make me realize that the textbooks are correct in this case. It is indeed best to start badger watching in May. And so that's what I did. Thank you. 
ready for another night of badger hunting. So on this first evening in May, my third watch, I've decided to go to the second location where the second set is. The badger set is just behind me, about 25 yards away. The wind is also coming from that way, from the east, into my face so they shouldn't smell me. And if I sit still, hopefully they won't see and hear me. I've got one hour and a half until sunset, so let's hope for the best. Well, the sun has just set. It's been half an hour since I saw my last badgers and they left into the east. So I think the whole badger family went out to hunt, to forage. So I don't think I'll be seeing, I'll be seeing them anymore uh, this evening. They will return um, long after I'm gone. So I think I'm gonna call it a night. But I'm so happy that I finally got to see my first badgers. I think I saw two cops and at least one adult. What a fantastic sight. I have to say that the stinging nettles are quite tall right now. So it's very, very difficult to photograph these badgers with all the stinging nettles, all the foliage everywhere. So this is one of the challenging parts of badger photography. You have to wait until May uh, for them to come out before sunset. But then there's a lot of foliage, a lot of uh, plant growth making it very difficult to see them. So I think tomorrow I'll go to set number one again. The stinging nettles are a bit lower there, so the visibility of the set is a bit better. And hopefully they will emerge as well. And I can finally get some nice photographs and footage of these amazing animals. See you tomorrow. So the waiting game has begun again. It's now almost 7.30. So within an hour the badgers could come up. It's still early May, so maybe they will come out later. The wind is coming in from the east, so it's blowing straight into my face. So that's perfect, so they should not smell me. I'm going to wear black gloves.
It's now nine o'clock. The sun is about to set. I don't think these badgers will come tonight. Time to pack up and call it a night. So, I think I'll pack up now and leave. And I'll return in maybe a week, second week of May. Let's try again then. And just when I was about to turn off my camera and call it a night, I saw something stir around the set. And there it was, the first badger popping up. After about half a minute, it went back into the set. And then I was frantically searching for other badgers, but I didn't see anything. So I was kind of disappointed again. This was only a shimmer, I wanted to see more. And then about 10 minutes later, the same badger popped up again from the set. And I've read about this. Sometimes badgers double check to make sure it is safe. And indeed, once this badger fully emerged from the set for the second time, other badgers followed suit. They're leaving. Mommy and her cubs are leaving. I think it's, uh, well, it's at least one cub and a parent. They're now leaving to forage. So that means it's almost time for me to leave. So I won't disturb them. And then suddenly one of the badgers, I think the leader of the clan, saw me. And I sat very still. And the badger seemed to carry on. And then the badger saw me again. And after a few seconds, the badger seemed spooked and ran back to its entrance hole. I felt pretty bad because I thought that I had disturbed the badgers. But after sitting still for a while, the badgers returned back to business. And after 10 more minutes, I decided to call it a night. Wow, what a fantastic evening. What a beautiful, intimate moment. I was just ready to pack up my stuff and go, since the sun had already set and I didn't see any badgers. And just when I was about to turn off my camera, the first adult badger popped up. And then another one, and then a cup. And I now have some beautiful, intimate footage of an adult badger and a cup grooming each other. So beautiful. And I think I saw three, maybe four badgers at this set but they do emerge one hour later than the badgers at the other set. So yesterday they emerged around eight o'clock and this was nine, nine fifteen. So it's very dark. I had to push the ISO of my camera up to 51,200. I have an F 2.0 equivalent uh, lens by using a speed booster. And I needed all the light I could, could gather. So this shows how incredibly difficult it is to capture badgers. You need a light sensitive camera, you need to sit downwind, you need to know where the set is. And once all these things are in place, you can experience some magical moments. So this was really worth all the effort. And I'm very happy that I got to share this moment with you guys. And hopefully I get to share many more evenings with these beautiful animals. Good night. Sure you approach the set um, downwind so with the wind at your face.
place. I keep repeating this because this is paramount to successful badger watching. So let's hope the badgers come out tonight. It was a little dark tonight, but now the sun has just come out, so it's perfect. I'm just being attacked by mosquitoes all over, so I'm going to cover my face now. was amazing. This was the best night so far. I just had an encounter with a whole badger family. Four cubs and two adults. And they were all playing together and having a, a jolly good time. So this was fantastic. And it's now 45 minutes after sunset. And now I can finally leave since the badgers have left. And of course you don't want to spook them. So always wait until the badgers leave the set to go out and hunt and forage. So you can leave the set and you do not disturb the badgers. And this is not only better for the badgers, but also for you. Because the next night you can return and the badgers never even knew uh, you were there. So they will be more likely to make an appearance uh, once again. And to make things even better, one of my trail cams recorded two additional cops at the set where I also documented the fox. This brings the total to eight cops. But I'm sure that many more can be found, since I have so many sets in my area. Apparently, this area provides good habitat for badgers, since they produce so many cubs. Over the next couple of nights, I spent some time near a few sets with my friend Rick. He took his Nikon DSLR with him. Unfortunately, besides a lot of mosquitoes and a few wood mice, we didn't see any badgers those evenings. And by the third week of May, the stinging nettles had taken over the forest. And it became very difficult for me to observe the badgers. So it seems I have to content myself with the images that I got. In the end, I'm satisfied since I got to see these elusive mammals. So I hope you enjoyed this extra long episode about badgers. I had an amazing time finding and filming these animals. So I encourage all of you to go out there into the forest and to find your own badgers. Of course it's not easy to see these animals in the wild. But I can guarantee you that it's worth all the effort. So please go out there and witness these amazing nocturnal mammals. They are fascinating. For now Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.